Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here, coming at you with another Logos video. In this one, no Greek, no problem. A lot of you have reached out to me before and you're interested in doing in-depth study in your Logos Bible software, but you don't have any of the original languages. You're unsure what to do with all of the Greek and Hebrew resources you have. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how even if you have no Greek training whatsoever, you can set up your Logos Bible software so that you can take maximum advantage of your Greek lexicons. You can mirror this video for the Hebrew as well, but in this one, I'm going to focus in on the Greek. Now, I want you guys to know that I have targeted this video at complete beginners. So if you already have like a little bit of background in understanding the original language tools in Logos, a lot of this might be underwhelming for you. But if you're really unsure about the software, this should be right up your alley. Now, the first thing I would like to bring your attention to is not needed, but it can be helpful. And this is the Greek alphabet tutor. If you bring this up, you can actually go in and learn the Greek alphabet. I recommend you do this and just learn the basic letters and the pronunciation, broadly speaking, of the koine. This is going to help you a lot in terms of your understanding of the language. You don't have to learn anything beyond this. I want you to know before I took any Greek exegesis classes or any Greek in college, I actually taught myself the alphabet. It's not that hard. It's quite similar to English and once you can recognize the letters that's going to help you a lot with your lexicon and your other work. I've got the ESV right here. There are a couple of ways you can set this interlinear up. I'm going to show you how. Now the one caveat is that whatever translation you select it needs to have a reverse interlinear built into it. If it doesn't have a reverse interlinear built in you're not going to be able to get a lot of the functionality that I'm identifying for you. So just make sure that it has that. Now what is an interlinear? Well, back in the day, when you actually had the Bible in print, they would actually put the Greek right underneath the English. And what an interlinear was, is it was the original language of the Greek, and then underneath it, you would have all of the English. A reverse interlinear is just the opposite. Instead, you have your English translation as primary, and then the Greek words are adjusted to match the English translation. In this case, the reverse interlinear is important because we're going to keep the word order of our chosen English translation. If you have any other questions on interlinears, there are actually two resources in Logos that are interactives on how to understand an interlinear. You might want to check those out. Once you have your chosen translation, I want you to go under the visual filters. That's this triple dot in the shape of a triangle, and there are a few settings I need you to select. First, scroll down to the corresponding words section. That's right here. And this corresponding words section, there are many different options you can select here. I keep same word and same lemma selected. This means that when you highlight a word in your English translation, it's also going to highlight it in the Greek as well. This is really valuable, especially if you don't know the original languages, because all of the Greek words are just a mess to you. But now that you've selected the one in English, ah, it selects that word in Greek. One other setting that I find really helpful is all the way down at the bottom here. It says emphasize active lemmas. This means that if you're looking up a lemma, say in your lexicon, it will also pop up and highlighted in the Greek text itself. That's really valuable. Now that you've got the settings established in your chosen translation, you need to decide which way you're going to utilize the interlinear function. I do it one way, and I'm going to show you that first, but then after that, I'll show you another way of doing it. The way I like to do it is to utilize this multi-book display. In order to set this up right, you actually have to select individual books in order to put them in as the multi-book display. And for your English Bible, you're going to want to select Hebrew Old Testament and a Greek New Testament probably. And so I've got the LHB and the NA28 set up so that whenever I bring up my ESV and I click this pane, now it brings up my Greek or Hebrew along with it. You can see here that now that you have selected these settings, every time you click a word, it highlights it in both sides. Again, this is great if you don't know Greek. So this is my preferred way of doing it. But if you like the old interlinear style, that option is available too. You can see right here with the interlinear button that you can click that and there are a couple of ways of actually looking at the Greek and the English on top of each other. The first is called the inline reverse interlinear. And this is exactly how they used to do it in a print format. You can see it's kind of messy, but if you're looking at individual word study, you've got all your information available to you there. In the drop down menu, you can select those things that you want visible and you can make this bigger or smaller, whatever you would like in order to see all of the information you're looking for. Another way is to select the reverse interlinear pane and turn off the inline reverse interlinear. This setting displays all of the interlinear information down at the bottom, and you can scroll back and forth left and right as you are reading through the verse. 
If you highlight or click a word, it should navigate to that automatically down there in the interlinear pane. And you can go and set up exactly what you want displayed as you right click on the far left column. Whichever option you select, the whole reason we are doing this is so that you can be reading your Bible in English and navigate to whatever Greek word you want to when I'm going to show you how to study momentarily. One final thing that I want you to select is in the program settings. Once you've selected this, we're going to be good to go on our studies. The program settings are at the triple dot menu down at the lower left corner on the pane. And under program settings, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that there's this little button that says prefer lemmas. Go ahead and click that on. This means that when you're doing your study, it's not going to do the primary study on the English word that's in the text. That's a translation issue. Instead, it's going to do the study on the lemma, the underlying Greek word, which is what we want because we are leveraging our Logos Bible software to study in the original language. Not only that, if you like the parsing information to be shown as you hover over words, you're going to want to scroll down to show information tooltips and highlight that one as well. I turn that one on because having that parsing information readily available is super handy. All right, guys, that's it. The setup is done. Now you should be able to study in Logos Bible software, the original languages, without knowing a lick of Greek yourself. Let's look at John chapter 5 and verse 28. The word here is grabbing my attention. If I click on the word, it highlights the word on my interlinear pane so I know the Greek word here. I happen to know this is akuo, but you may not know that. That's fine. You've got the word readily available. So if you right click on here, you should get a pane come down. You can do this in the English or the Greek. It doesn't matter. Once this pane comes down, it's imperative that on the left side of the pane, you select that item that you're looking for. You don't want selection. That's going to search the English. That's not what we're looking for. You don't want reference. That's the whole Bible verse. You're not looking for that. Instead, you want to select this little wheel. This is Akuo. Now you are telling Logos you want to search for the Greek lemma. This is very important. Now, if you go to the right side of the pane, this is telling Logos what you want to do with this lemma. You are looking at the lemma Akuo. What do you want to do with it? We want Bible word study. From there, you can navigate to almost anything you'd want. Now, the Bible word study tool has a lot of really cool features, but I just want to point your attention to the first two, translation and lemma. If you pull up translation, you can see all of the places in which your English Bible has this Greek word underlying it. That's 428 places. That tells you that's a very common Greek word. Not only that, you can see how it's translated here in the ESV translation. If you want to change which translation you're looking at, just click settings here and pick a different English translation. A final feature about this tool is you can click on any of the parts and that will show you all of the verses in that English translation where that individual Greek word is translated that way. This is really handy. So already you can see here that Akuo is typically translated heard, hear, hearing, or hears. Sometimes translated listen. This already helps you. Now, when you're reading in your English, you recognize that if this verb pops up, most often it means hear. But perhaps you want to dig a little bit deeper. Open up the Lemma tab and click more. This is where all of your lexicons that actually have this word underneath it are brought up. If you want to open one of these lexicons, this is like a dictionary. It will tell you all of the senses in which this word is used, and it's going to tell you the ones that are most common. It'll give you subsenses, and it'll give you verse examples. This is really handy to just get a sense of what the word means. So now you know what the word means, at least broadly speaking, but if you actually want to understand the parsing and what tense it's in, you need to take one extra step. For this step, I would recommend that you have one of the following resources or a resource like it. These resources are the Biblical Greek Companion for Bible Software Users by Mark Strauss, or you can also utilize the Glossary of Morphosyntactic Database Terminology by Mike Kaiser, and finally, one of the first resources of its kind, the Pocket Dictionary for the Study of New Testament Greek by Matthew DeMoss. Any of these three resources or resources like them are going to help you make sense of the parsing information. Let me show you what that is. If we hover over the word here in John 5.28, we can see that it is a verb, future active indicative third person plural. This is really important because this is the conjugation information of the word in question. Not only does a word have a meaning, but depending upon how it's parsed in an individual verse, it might mean something different. For example, something that jumps out to me with this verb is that it's in the future tense. This is not very typical. So I want to check any of the three resources that I showed you for the future tense. What do they have to say? You see, if you navigate to one of these resources and read up a little bit on the future tense itself, this is going 
to help you know exactly how the word is being used in your context. Now you know what the word means from the lexical information, and you know what the word is doing in the context based upon its parsing information. And that's it, guys. Enjoy. Don't get me wrong. There is so much more that you could learn digging into the original languages with Logos Bible software. But I showed you how to get the vast majority of the information, what the word means in terms of its semantic domain, and how it's being used in the individual sentence based upon its parsing information. If you were to take Greek 1 and Greek 2, you would learn all of the tenses and moods. You would learn extensive vocabulary, etc. Here, I'm showing you how to shortcut all that information so you can go to some resources that are going to tell you roughly what this word is doing in this verse. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you, that you can get a little bit of value out of studying in Greek when you don't know any Greek. Thank you so much for supporting the Pastor Tanner YouTube channel. Please utilize our Logos link. It gives me a small affiliate commission, and please consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. God bless. Bye.